Hello, I'm Steven the Calculator Guy, and today we're going to talk about bearing the bear. And what I mean by that is, how can we be profitable in a bear market if the bear market is coming? I know a lot of people are uh, looking at the macroeconomic conditions in the world economy and are a little bit bearish or worried. And I think that is a completely reasonable way to feel. Uh, I am super bullish DeFi long term. That's just because DeFi is what I perceive as like raw, pure capitalism, where you have competition at every level, foundational competition, so between blockchains, protocol competition between protocols and their own forks, and then investor competition, uh, trying to find the best investments. And even like, I mean, I, I think that most influencers are, are collaborative more than competitive, but even us, we're looking constantly for the best possible resources, the best possible protocols for our viewers. So even at that level, it's competitive. And I do think that competitive drives innovation. I mean, we're seeing some of the most interesting financial tools being developed in DeFi in real time. So that's fantastic. However, unless there's money being pumped into DeFi, none of that really matters. I mean, it still matters, certainly, for, for long-term financial innovation, but... In terms of investments, you still need good economic conditions. So if we are entering a bear market, uh, there's one major thing that has to happen before any of this works for an investor, and that is the investor must accept a bear market position. They must accept that the conditions are such that they are willing to bet on a continual downward trend. Now, if you did this back in November, you would have you would be doing very well right now, but it is incredibly difficult for investors to accept, admit and commit to a bearish mindset. Now, why is that? Well, most investors at this point in the market, at least in DeFi and crypto, are probably rather young. Between I think 25 and 34 is the average or, or it's the the mean not mean, the mode uh, age range. That's where most investors are, are coming in. And a lot of those investors are like, I don't know, what I call GameStop investors or Wall Street Bets investors. They got into uh, stocks or crypto around 2018, 2019, and have ridden an incredible bull market upwards. And so they only know bull market. They only know number go up. Uh, so not many of them experienced 2017 or not many of them experienced, I don't know, 2008 or 2000, year 2000 in stocks. And so they may not know how to shift their perspective into into bearish mindsets. Now, if you're long stocks forever, you know, I know plenty of older investors who are like, yeah, I just I buy things that I love and I keep them forever and they go up eventually. And I mean, that is definitely a mindset that you can maintain. If you just want to DCA into Bitcoin, by all means, DCA into Bitcoin. Long term, it will probably be a, a rather, uh, rather well-performing strategy. But you won't be making money throughout the bear market. You'll simply be accumulating Bitcoin to make money in the future, which is, again, a completely valid strategy. And I may even add it there. Uh, I may even add it just to, to show you that I am perfectly cool with a strategy like that. DCA into blue chips, right? So it's, it's a completely valid strategy. It's just not necessarily uh, one that will give you returns today or tomorrow or in a few months. It may take years, uh, probably not years, but it may take a very long time to recoup those, those costs. Okay, so what do I got? Uh, the two major ways to short the market, short means you're, you're making a bearish bet on the market, is through lending protocols and trading. So lending protocols, uh, this is like true shorting where you will, well, I'll just show you, right? Aave is the biggest lending platform in crypto, um, especially in DeFi. So on the Aave protocol, uh, you can deposit some asset. Now, true shorting, in my opinion, is where you would go and you would take uh, some form of stable coin. It looks like, can you really only use stable coin? Okay. okay. Uh, no, okay. So you would take a stable coin, right? You would deposit it. And you would get some sort of APY, right? With DAI, you get 2.81% APY. Hey, that's fantastic. Much better than banks can give you. So you're getting a yield on that asset, which is going to go away because we're about to borrow an asset that has a higher APY. But So you deposit some amount of money as DAI and you borrow against it. Now, you do not borrow the same asset. Instead, you borrow a more volatile asset like Ethereum or Chainlink or Uniswap, whatever it is. Oh, actually, that's a really good idea. Uniswap is a farm token. Uh, borrowing these would almost always be intelligent. I did have to cut the recording to to say to all of the Uniswap fanboys, I know Uniswap is not a farm token. It's a DEX token uh, that is used as rewards for your pools and your farms. Um, 
I didn't mean to be pejorative. However, look at your tokens chart. So anyways, uh, you you lend some stablecoin, you borrow a volatile asset, and then you immediately sell that asset for a stablecoin. All right? So lend, borrow, sell. Okay, so you're probably going to borrow like at 60% or 50%, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, so let's say you you have 100 die, right? You deposit that, you borrow $50 worth of Uniswap, sell it immediately. Now you have uh, $50 cash, you have $100 in there, and now you play the waiting game. I mean, you can go ahead and get a yield on that if you want to, right? There are plenty of places to get stable yields and while you wait. Uh, not a bad idea. And then you, know, you go over to your charts. Um, trading and you watch uniswap so you go chart you look at uni and as it goes down right it's going to cost you less to buy the amount that you borrowed back so let's uniswap perps why am i looking at perps uh yeah this is fine so let's say you did that log let's say you did that here right uh it looks like you have a confirmed sell, maybe a huge candle, but you sold at $20, maybe you sold at $17, maybe you sold the next day at $16, right? Uh, so you borrowed, you sold, and then you just waited, and right now, if you bought back, you could buy the same amount back for $11. So let's just say like a one share uh, situation. You sold one share for $16, you bought it back for $11. Okay, so you pocket that $5. That's like... What is that? Uh, looks like a 33% increase in profit. That's 33% ROI. Now, granted, this is over what uh, between December 5th and now, so it takes you a, a month and a half. But that's really decent ROI. So if you're betting on a bear market, not a bad idea. So this is what I call true shorting. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it's not that I call it that. It's just that's what sh shorting is. You uh, you borrow an asset, sell it immediately, and then wait to buy it back later. That way you can pocket all of the the difference. In that so that's pretty simple right that's what well, you can do on Aave you can do it on any lending platform maybe you want to do it on the one where you get the best possible yield Aave is just safe and secure so if you're planning on having your money in there for a very long time Aave is probably a good place to do that uh, I mean Geist on Phantom you can do that um, you can do that on uh, Tranquil for pretty decent APYs and APRs on, on Harmony One uh, and also the rates for Bitcoin and Ethereum are really good on Harmony One, I've noticed. But you know they have they have node issues, and Solana has a lot of node issues, uh, or at least they just have like uptime issues. Okay, so that's it, right? You lend a stable, you borrow a token, you sell a token for some sort of stable, and then you buy it back at a lower price at, in the future date. And you can of course get some sort of yield on that stable. In the meantime, uh, maybe you want to do frax frax farming for a bit if you have a big bags on Ethereum. Okay, the next one, mirrored short. So this one's slightly different. Uh, you can still you would still be on a lending platform but instead you want to you want to lend you want to deposit your ethereum some sort of unstable asset or or you know much more variable asset like ethereum and then you borrow the ethereum against it so what this allows you to do is maintain the exposure to your underlying asset like ethereum as well as never really risk liquidation with the last uh with the last option if the if Uniswap for whatever reason mooned and broke a particular LTV, which is loan to value ratio, you could get liquidated because then they're not sure if you could pay that back, right? With this strategy, you can't get liquidated. So let's say you want to be exposed to Ethereum long term, you don't mind holding it even if the value goes down, but you still want to short it. What you can do is take your Ethereum into this protocol, uh, deposit it, and then borrow Ethereum against it. So Depending on the protocol, you can usually borrow quite a large amount against its own asset because there is no risk of liquidation. Uh, really, it's you, you can't change the loan to value because they both go up and down at the exact same rate because they're the exact same asset. So you, you deposit your Ethereum, you borrow Ethereum against it, and then you immediately sell that Ethereum, right? Just like we were talking before, immediately sell that Ethereum and then wait for the price to go down. Maybe you're getting a yield on stable coins in the meantime. Uh, and when it goes down far enough, you buy it back right you pay back your loan and you keep the difference that's another way of shorting i call it a mirror short there's probably a more there's probably a different way of describing that uh, i just call it mirrored because you're you're using the same asset so lower risk uh because there's no risk there's i mean unless there's some sort of contract issue uh there should be no risk of liquidation 
because the LTV should never change. Um, and it's very similar. So, I mean, you are exposing yourself to Ethereum, uh, which you may or may not want to do in a bearish market. Maybe you're super long Ethereum or you're super long Bitcoin and you just want to, you want to short Bitcoin while also being exposed to it. This is a great way to do that. Okay. Uh, false short this is what I call a false short or a yield short. You can lend either a stable or a token um, and then borrow a token against it. Now, I, I don't know why you would do this with a token. Um, someone took that out, actually. You would lend a stable, right? So like you would lend USDT, MIM, FRAX, whatever it is, you would lend a stable coin and then you'd borrow something against it like Ethereum, like Uniswap, whatever. And then you'd go and get a yield on that token while it goes down. You don't care that it's going down because you borrowed it, right? You just have to give that back. Uh, you don't lose any money by it devaluing. Devaluating, is that the right word? So as it goes down, you don't really care, uh, but you're getting a yield on it. Maybe you're, you're farming it, maybe you're single side staking it. Um, what it, maybe you're, you're, well, you could be doing risky things like uh, selling covered calls on that asset, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But if, if the strike gets hit, you're, you're fucked, uh, which you don't want to want that to happen. But I mean, there are also ways you can get a yield on it without losing your asset. So that's what you're doing. And then, uh, you know, you get to keep the yield. And just return the tokens when you're done. So it's like you're borrowing the yield to you're borrowing a token to go get a yield off of it over there. And then when you're done getting the yield, you come back and you know you give them their token plus interest. If the interest is higher than the yield, bad day for you. If the interest is lower than the yield, you made a profit. So that's great. And you kept all of your stables. That's the most important thing. So whatever you deposited as a stable coin, you you have all of that as well. Uh, so that's really cool, right? So you deposit a thousand dollars in USDC, you borrow six hundred dollars of Ethereum, you go get a yield off that. Maybe you get like twenty-five bucks or a hundred bucks of yield off of that. Well, you return the Ethereum, however much it is or how much it's worth now, and you kept that yield. So uh, there's that. Did I spell yield wrong? No, didn't think so. All right. So the next way is trading. Now there there are the more degenerate ways of doing this and the less degenerate ways of doing this. I think the most degenerate ways of doing this is using like 3x perpetuals. Uh, generally not available in the US, but of course you can use VPNs. Um, I'm not encouraging you to break the law, but uh, you know, I, I do support decentralized finance. So, you know, draw your own conclusions. Here we have KuCoin, which is a centralized exchange, which for some reason lets me trade perps. I don't know why it shouldn't. I think it should be against the law, but uh, it does. So you can use KuCoin, uh, and on KuCoin you can go ahead and, and buy like Bitcoin uh, 3s, which is three times short, which means for every one dollar that Bitcoin goes down in value, Bitcoin 3s goes up three dollars in value, which is really fun and really nice. Except if Bitcoin goes up by 33% or 33.33% .33 repeating, you're liquidated. You you go to zero. You have no value in your short. Uh, which is probably not what you want, right? Probably not what you're into. So there's that, right? Keep that in mind. You don't, you don't, you probably don't want that to happen to yourself or your your investment. But look, it's done really well. It was a dollar. What is this? This is a daily chart. It was a dollar uh, on the first of Jan. No, it's like a dollar twenty. Dollar seventeen, the first of January. It has more than two x since then, right? But if you look at the Bitcoin chart. Uh, if I just do Bitcoin USDC, nothing. I'll just do it over here. Then you can see since January, which is right here, uh, we went from forty-eight to thirty-five. So we didn't quite go down. Let's see. What did we go down by? Thirty-eight. To I don't know, like like something like 40 something percent. So we went down by 40 something percent, but we went up by, in the short, we went up by more than 2x. So that's great, right? You would have wanted to have been in there if you could see a sell pattern uh, really well, right? Uh, and you could have sold, if you would have sold here, man, you would you would have been making so much money, right? If you sold at the top in November uh, for, for like a 3x short, yeah, you would have been rolling the door because you just imagine all of this upside down times three. So, you know, that's one way to do it. But again, you have to commit to the, the narrative and you also have to say that, no, we're never going to get uh, uh, even a small bullish run enough to, to make that 3x short wreck you uh, <clears throat> because for every dollar that Bitcoin goes up, you lose 
three times that amount uh, in value of your short. So keep that in mind. That's why these things are so risky. Uh, so you can do that on KuCoin. You can do that on Float. With Float, you would do that. Flow Capital, you have uh, Ethereum 3x, which interestingly uh, has, okay, well, they had full exposure yesterday, but it, they have pretty good exposure. So here they have 86% exposure, which means you'll, you'll get 86% of that 3x going up or down. Uh, and if you want to know more about Float Capital's, what their exposure means, go ahead and like watch Flow Capital videos. I think I have a video on Flow Capital with Ohm, but I even have a calculator for them. Uh, but effectively, just like, you are you are 86 percent exposed to the 3x price price fluctuations of ethereum here you're 100 exposed so 100 percent exposed means for every one dollar uh it goes up y your your investment would go up by three dollars downward means for every one dollar it goes down your investment would go up by 86 percent of three dollars <laughs> hope that makes sense uh so there you go you can short that way and then there's also options. Baby woke up, so now I have a baby on my lap, but she's not whining, so that's good. Uh, the last one is options. So I've broken these down into real options or quote unquote real options, and then uh, staking options. So staking covered calls and staking cash secured puts. Um, so here we have Lyra and open. I'll put an asterisk by open because I don't necessarily love their UX. Um, so I'm not even gonna look at them. <laughs> which I think is probably, it's probably rude. They're like one of the top protocols, uh, but it just doesn't work for me. Um, you can, yeah, go ahead and look at, look into them at your own time. Maybe they've changed. I will look at them again in the future, but for right now, it's just not for me. Lyra, on the other hand, or Lyra, uh, has really nice looking options, really clean. You have to bridge to optimism. So you have to bridge your Ethereum over to optimism, which can take a bit of your yield. You know, keep that in mind when you're making these plays that you are going to lose some in the bridging process. Um, unfortunately, you have to bridge Ethereum over, which I believe you can only do from the Ethereum chain. So, you know, gas fees uh, there. But gas hasn't been, gas for bridging isn't always that bad. But you will also probably have an approval fee. So, you know, I apologize in advance for that. But let's look into the future. Let's say February 4th, right? You want to sell a covered call. And the reason why you'd want to sell a covered call is because a covered call would get called, which means you, you would lose your underlying asset in a bull market. Right. If you under, if you understand how covered calls work, uh, you there's a strike price, right? You can see the strike price on the left, four thousand down to twenty four hundred. Uh, if Ethereum finishes at the expiry at the expiring date, February fourth, at or above this number, then you must sell your asset, Ethereum, for that much. Now you still get the premium, right? You still get the the you still get that $188, $90, $39, $15. You still get to keep that, um, but but you lose your Ethereum at that value. So, you know, you buy Ethereum right now at $2,400. You go over here, you say, oh, yeah, I'm totally cool at selling it for, for $200 more than I bought it and getting $90 on top of that. Hell, yeah. So you come over here, you know, you you write this call, this covered call. You, you get $90 cash money just like that, and then... Uh, you know, but your your Ethereum is locked up until February fourth, and then if on February fourth it is over uh, twenty six hundred dollars, well you sell your Ethereum at twenty six hundred dollars. Um, but if you know if it's a bear market, that's not going to happen, right? So if it's a bear market, it's not over twenty six hundred dollars. You get to keep your Ethereum and do it again, right? So you keep all of your Ethereum, you keep that premium, and you can keep doing this. Now ninety dollars, what is that? Ninety out of twenty two hundred two thousand. And you can write these, what's the difference between these? 28th and 4th, I wanna see, is that two weeks? 28th, no, that's weekly, okay. So, wow, um, that's that's not bad. Let me look at where they are this week. So, at 28, $58 this week? Okay, so that's pretty good, $58. 58 divided by 20, 58 divided by 2600, um, 2%? That's incredible, that's incredible. Uh, okay, so like if you could get 2% weekly and, and compound that, that's insane. Um, that's really good. Now, you know, of course you might get called and then you have to go and buy more Ethereum and do it again. You're going to have a loss because you have to buy more Ethereum. Um, so like there is definitely risks to writing covered calls. And so, uh, you know, if you know more about options, you want to look for a delta. Oh gosh, I forget. Uh, you want to look for a delta around 0.3. Uh, now, I've been told the Greeks in these things aren't that great. But if we look at the Greeks here, do they have it? 
yeah the delta's uh 0.13 so so what that kind of means loosely this is a 13 percent chance of this getting called according to you know these metrics um if you look at the 26 yeah i'm cool with the 0 0.3 i'm cool with the 0 0.3 I'm cool buying Ethereum right now at 24, flipping it for 26 and getting another 2% on top of that. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I am bullish Ethereum long term. But this is just one more thing you can do in a bear market, right? We're assuming bear market conditions. So we're assuming the price is going to go down, not up. Now, could it go up to 26 just for one week? Surely it could. Um, and then you have to readjust your strategy, right? So maybe you want to go with a smaller delta, smaller yield, even 1% per week is, is not bad. That's 50% on your Ethereum. And if you compound that... So, you know, things to think about. I hope you didn't hear that. Uh, she just farted. I'm going to show her this video in the future. Um, okay, and then you can you can do like Dopex and Friction. So Dopex and Friction are pretty similar. You just, and I, I've looked at this in a few different videos. Uh, so uh, effectively, you're just, you're coming over here, you're staking your asset. You get a farm staking. Yeah, uh, let's look at Ethereum. So it's here. Uh, yeah, so 46% APY. That's great, right? That's awesome. That's already almost 1% per week. Uh, and then you actually get more than that. Because um, you get yields as well. So uh, you can see like in the in the past, the for these, these APR, uh, I mean, for, and this, these are really low strike prices. So probably not going to get called. 4,000, 7% APR. And you're getting that 70% APR paid to you from the time you invest to the time that this closes and i believe these are like yeah they're they're one month so you have to uh deposit and then sort of wait one month your ethereum is locked up for one month i believe it's locked up for one month i have to look back at the white paper again but please always read the white paper documents before investing of anything that i say uh, because i can't i can't invest in every single protocol i can go out and find them and i can do quick quick looks at them and, and you know go through the discord but there are thousands of protocols out there uh, I can't read everything, but assuming that it's locked up, it might not be locked up. Assuming it's locked up, it'd be one month. You're getting that 70% yield on it at a pretty reasonable strike. I mean, really reasonable strike price. Um, and I believe you're also getting the farm APY. So those two things together would be really nice, right? Really great. So that's Dopex. Again, these are bearish option strategies. Uh, and then, of course, you can DCA into blue chips. So if you're going to DCA, I recommend just picking a day. Don't look at the charts and say, I'm going to put this much money this day and just, you know, forget about it until we hit the next bear market, which could be in a few years, could be in a few months, could be in a few weeks. Who knows? Um, one last thing that I do recommend is, you know, uh, you don't have to get good at charting. I'm not good at charting, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a technical analyst, but uh, like, do have some sort of rules for when you buy in, when if you're going to buy to do some strategies, like have some sort of rule. I don't know. Or if you're going to sell, have some sort of rule. Uh, if I stay by my rules, I'd be doing much better. And you should stick to your rules, right? If you don't stick to your rules, things are going to get bad. If you do stick to your rules, you'll probably do okay as long as your rules are reasonable. And there are so many good investors out there who have great sets of rules. Uh, so just, you know, learn from them. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um, I did post these on the Patreon a few days ago. Uh, like right when right when Ethereum crossed over the eight EMA twenty one going downwards, and I was like, "All right, this is this is bad news." At least according to my metrics, uh, let's get some bear market strategies going. So if you want to be part of the Patreon, um, go ahead and join it. Link in the description. We also have like a paid Discord where there are a whole group of mods uh, willing to answer any questions about decentralized finance or you know give you some support as well as myself. I'm in there and a lot of other uh, very skilled DeFi users. Um, and it's a fun place to be. So all stuff in the description. That's to my Patreon. If you want to join the discord. Uh, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.